what's the real soaker deal here it's not often i do videos and it's strange because as a blogger you should really come up on video and always be out there advertising yourself but i hate video i try never to do it i like filming other people and try not to come on camera but the events that have unfolded uh, this week has forced me to want to speak about what's happened and, and how it's actually made me feel because I feel that it has affected me to such a degree that I almost feel like I can't even move on or, or do stuff or carry on every day. What I saw when I rolled over at 4am in the morning was I don't know, I, I, I don't have the words for what I saw, but it was enough. And subsequently, I haven't watched the whole video. Those that do, you're brave. And there's no way that I could sit there and watch a 10 minute video of someone pleading for their life and dying on camera. Much less the person that had to film it and thank you because if you didn't stand firm and and decide that you were going to film what you saw was wrong the world wouldn't know and i watched today as you went back and revisited where you took that film and uh, you know I can't imagine what you're going through as much as what the family's going through, as much as what the world is going through, as much as what black people have been going through from some time. I'm no political activist. I don't know. I can't quote. I can't bring forward names, dates and things that we've gone through. But all I know is what I've been seeing and what I've been feeling is just a bit too real now for me to continually sit back and think, my God, another life is lost and we sit back and think this is okay. It's it's just not okay. On so many levels, it's not okay. And I had a conversation with some friends today and this is kind of what made me do this video in, in terms of, oh, we've, we've done the writing, we've done the peaceful thing, we, we've done Black Wall Street, what else can we do? There's nothing else we can do. You know, it's intrinsic, it's it's embedded, so therefore that's it. And I thought, wow, it, it, is that how we think? Is that how we are all collectively thinking about this problem that we're like, someone else's problem, there's nothing we can do, we've tried everything. But now, seeing the reality of what's out there, it's not somebody else's problem anymore, it's not going to go away. And before it gets better, I almost feel like it's going to get worse. And we have to do something now. It's, it's kind of time. And we can't keep sitting back and saying it's down to somebody else or celebrities or the white man or, or whoever you want to blame or, or, or hand that baton over to you, over to. But we need a little bit of courage now. Just, just a little bit and start moving forward on that courage to to build what's so fucking broken a little bit of courage to say i'm not buying this shit i'm going to build my own i'm not banking here i'm going to build my own i'm not working here i'm going to have my own job and <laughs> it's always scary you need the courage to do that because you don't know where your next penny's coming from. You don't know. This is the job that's giving you the finance that's going to allow you to live and go on your holidays and buy your clothes and your Nikes and your pretty little thing. 100, 200 pound orders and all the things that we take for granted. And then go buy our hair from the Indian man and feed them with money. And then wonder why we're still suffering in our communities. I don't know, y'all. I just... It's just a time for thought now and more than thought, so much more than thought. And I've been thinking about what my part in this and what I can do, what my little bit 
can do in all of this to try and make a difference. And I'm going to start something and I'm going to start kind of like something venture capitalist, you know, get people investing in black people, get that trust back in black people, because it's not the Nigerians that rip off black people or black people, it's the white people too. I've been ripped off three times this year with building works and they haven't been black. So let's get over that stigma that black people aren't trustworthy and they rip people off. It's rubbish. It's what's been indoctrinated between us so we don't do business between ourselves. And the minute that something happens, yeah, black people can't do business with them. <laughs> but you do it with a white man now and time and time again or the Indian man or whatever colour man you want to do business with to get that green money brown money or whatever color it is on your hands we're selling ourselves out and it just concerns me that we're leaving a next generation here to deal with this shit so when we're going to rise up people when we're going to start thinking about what we're going to do to benefit each other how can we be better towards each other how are we going to not let people take advantage of us time and time again because I'm done. I'm just done. And I want everyone else to be done too. And not just say we can't do nothing more. We can. So much more. So much more. Don't let this man's death be in vain for anybody or the hundreds of other people that have died before him senselessly, needlessly, murderously. Those four men deserve to die in jail. Nothing short, nothing less. That's it, that's, that's all I wanna see. And I'm afraid that if the people don't see that, that's it. So let's see, let's see now what we're really gonna do, what, what we gonna do. Are we going to be that little bit more courageous and brave and stand up for ourselves? Are you going to stand up for yourself? Are you going to take that step forward or just keep on treading that same fucking treadmill hoping for change? <laughs>